Today's video contains spoilers for Halo Infinite. Click away now if you haven't beat the game and you don't want to be spoiled. I warned you. All right, the Flood aren't in Halo Infinite, and they don't even really have as much of a presence as I expected given Zeta Halo's role. For those who didn't know, Zeta Halo was covered by Flood research facilities known collectively as the Palace of Pain. There, the Forerunners tried to find a cure for the Flood, but of course, were ultimately unsuccessful. If somebody offered me a bet on whether the Flood would be in Halo Infinite or not, I think I would have struggled to decide either way. I think, however, as has been the case since Halo CE, the Covenant or the Banished are never really the main threat. They're typically the cause of some greater catastrophe. So whether that's the Flood or not, I did expect something else to be involved. So of course, when you play through Halo Infinite, you don't encounter the Flood, but we do meet new factions, including the Harbinger and her species, the Endless. I did a full, pretty deep, and I think quality breakdown of the Endless two videos ago, but basically to summarize things very briefly, the Endless had a very strange place in the galaxy. We know very little about what they were doing during the time of the Forerunners, but they somehow survived the firing of the Halo Rings. About a hundred years after the array was used, the Monitor of Installation 07 discovered the species and the ring was actually moved to their homeworld. There was a meeting between presumably offensive bias and representatives of the Endless, perhaps the Harbinger, and that led to the entire species basically being locked within Installation 07. We don't know whether the Endless were guilty of anything other than through some technological or biological peculiarity or feature surviving the array. It may have been that they were just innocent, but the Forerunners saw them as a threat. That is a bit strange though, because within the campaign, we hear Cortana say that she knows there are worse things than the Flood within the ring, presumably referring to the Endless. And does this also mean now there's a new big baddie perhaps on the horizon that the Flood are no longer in the picture? No, I don't think so. For one, I refuse to believe that it's some sort of coincidence that Zeta Halo had all this lore established about it and that Halo Infinite was set on the ring unless there was meant to be some eventual connection. I personally also see the Flood as the fundamental evil of the Halo universe. I think that was something that Halo's perhaps made a mistake for getting away from, and that's resulted in essentially several wipes of the franchise. Now, it's true there was technically one continuity, but Halo 4 failed to establish a continual villain, as did Halo 5. Now Halo Infinite has a new kick at the can. So no, I don't think the mere fact that the Endless exist and that they're talked about in this way necessarily means that the Flood no longer have a place in the universe, I think it actually means the opposite. According to the Grand Edict, the Endless were locked away to preserve the legacy of the Forerunners and everything they've done. What is that? Well, by the time he's discussing the Forerunners legacy, they've already wiped the galaxy and somewhat defeated, at least temporarily, the Flood. A lot of speculate, and I think this may be the right track, that the main threat possessed by the Endless is not in what they could do, but in what they could become if they were infected by the Flood. And that's not to say that there aren't any issues with this theory. We'll discuss those as a whole. But the basic idea is that the Endless either have some biological or technological ability to survive the Halo Array, or as hinted at throughout the game, that they may even somehow be able to manage aspects of time travel or time manipulation. The real fear of the Forerunners could have been that if the Endless were infected by the Flood and thus incorporated into the Flood as a whole, that they would gain extraordinary powers which would make them immune to even this most devastating final option. The reason why I say there are some issues with this theory is because one, just from a storytelling perspective, it gets somewhat confusing, I think, for the player to have not only the Banished as a faction, but also the Endless and also the Flood, with the Flood coming in and changing the picture. I don't know, that might just be a little bit convoluted. I also think that the Endless are being presented too as a threat in their own right, so it may not be very satisfying if in the end they're not that dangerous, but for whatever they do to the Flood. I still however think that the Endless aren't outright evil or malevolent like the Flood. There's no evidence that they did anything to deserve being locked away by the Forerunners, and and in fact, through both the conversations you have with the Harbinger and the audio logs, it actually is the opposite. That being
being said, a hundred thousand years being locked away is bound to make anyone fairly angry, especially if they were locked away for no reason. And we do see that the Harbinger species does seem to have some innate powers. I mean, she pretty easily bests Master Chief in their first encounter and honestly chooses not to kill him, which by the way, was one of my points about her not seeming to be outright malevolent like other entities that Chief has fought. So suffice to say, there's evidence either way. Another interesting thing that I wanna analyze here is this one image that has been going around the internet. A lot of people have, I think correctly, identified this as a flood form while others are pointing out that it could perhaps be an engineer. I personally don't think it's an engineer. Engineers were actually biomechanical creations of the Forerunners. I don't think that they would necessarily want to repopulate the galaxy with them but it's also a bit weird that the flood would be indexed in this way from what i knew about past halo rings it seems like they're usually preserved in a semi-living form but whatever either way i don't think the silix is indicative of any future events i think it's probably just a fun little easter egg for fans that being said if i were a betting man i think eventually we will fight the flood in halo infinite's dlc the more important question i think is whether they will be the main antagonist of the universe again and after everything we've discussed in this video i don't know here's to hear your thought though in regards to the question of how could the flood come back again like every halo ring we know that there are containment facilities that could easily be breached the banished certainly have their fair share of experience with the flood so that could be an interesting mix up there it might also be neat to see some of the guardians repurposed for anti-flood duties but i presume there are some of them still left and it also offers an opportunity for the factions in the galaxy who are allied to come together i just don't think the banished can serve as the main threat forever this may be controversial but they're almost a little overpowered for me i don't think they necessarily earn the competency that they have i don't think there's a real credibility there like there was with the covenant but again we'll see let me know all of your thoughts and more down below and until next time guys be safe have a good one and may the force be with you